Well, today we've had confirmation from the local HHSs that what we revealed in this building last week was right, and that is that they've been asked to cut funding. Been asked to cut funding during the biggest health challenge that has faced them in a generation. And today, to blame COVID as a reason why you haven't been able to negotiate those agreements, that must really stick in the craw of all of those people on the front line who are just screaming for a little bit more to help them in their hour of need. Uh, make no mistake, uh, the Minister can talk about record budgets all that they like, that the truth is that these HHSs have been asked to find savings at the front line. Now, what money has been spent in the bureaucracy and what happens next week in the budget won't paper over the fact that they are holding their ground and for good reason. And when local health leaders refuse to sign an agreement and get summoned to Brisbane, that looks a lot like a crisis meeting in the eyes of honest Queenslanders. I'll get Ros to say a few words. Well, it's clear that the Queensland Government is losing control of health. All of this week they have been on a PR initiative while Queensland Health is in crisis. Today we saw the Health Minister announce um, an expansion of the mass vaccination hubs, which is something that the Opposition has been calling for for months. We welcome that commitment, but we also know that people are having difficulty even booking to get a vaccination. So all this government has done over the last week has gone on a PR initiative, cutting ribbons of hospitals that were already open six months ago, instead of making sure that the booking system to ensure that Queenslanders are vaccinated is correct. Well, here in Queensland, uh, under the Labor government, not only are we seeing uh, service delivery decline in our hospital system, uh, but also in our education system and schools as well. Uh, revelations today that there are acute teacher workforce uh, shortages uh, in maths and science, not only uh, at schools here in Queensland, um, in Brisbane, but across Queensland, uh, is simply not good enough. Uh, this government must get the basics right, and they're failing on the basics. They're throwing more money at the system with less teachers, and that's jeopardising the educational outcomes of students here in Queensland. Well, here's a free uh, lesson for the Education Minister. The Minister should be standing up today and being open, transparent and accountable uh, with parents, teachers and students here in Queensland as to why there, there are these acute workforce uh, shortages. Is it reasonable that these shortages are happening in one of our biggest schools, for example, the Gallup State School, um, where students have been told to come after hours to, to catch up? Well, it's simply not good enough. The government was trumpeting uh, an $81 million commitment in 2019 over the next four years. They're now two years into that. We're seeing less teachers uh, and jeopardising the educational outcomes uh, for students in science and maths. Um, there was also the $12 million opening of the new facility at the Gap State High School uh, for science, uh, technology, engineering and maths. And again, we're seeing shortages there and that's going to jeopardise uh, the educational outcomes for students at that school. Well, the LNP has always had a strong track record of investing in our schools, supporting our teachers and ensuring that numerously and literacy outcomes here in Queensland are, are the best that they can be. Well, we would invest and we would ensure that we would have good recruitment and retention strategies in place to ensure that we attract the best and brightest when it comes to our teachers here in Queensland. And that's the right thing to do by students, our parents uh, and our teaching workforce. Look, um, we want to encourage as many Queenslanders as possible to get vaccinated. As we've said before, no one cares which needle it is, whether it's a state or a federal government needle. We just need to have it in the arms of all Queenslanders. Now, the government has lost control of Queensland Health and they certainly have botched a lot of the rollout of the vaccine. Um, we need to know that people who are booking can actually get a slot um, and that people aren't having to line up for eight hours, eight to 12 hours to get a vaccination. It needs to be orderly, it needs to be organised, and it needs to be accurate. Um, 
Look, I think if we've got vaccine available, and we have had vaccine available, the government keeps saying that the supply is an issue. Um, we know that that's not the case, and really, whoever needs to get vaccinated should get vaccinated. And they are jumping the queue already. So the more Queenslanders who get vaccinated means that we won't have lockdowns in the future that will affect businesses across Queensland. Well, certainly the most important thing is that the education of those students is not uh, jeopardised and the government needs to be uh, open, transparent and accountable uh, with those students, parents and teachers as to what the arrangements will be uh, with the redevelopment that will be taking place there. I fall on the side of the local health leaders and you can continue to trumpet a record spend. Well, of course, with rising CPI, you're always going to have a record spend. My issue is what's happening on the front line. My issue is asking local HHSs to make savings at a time when they are already stretched. My issue is asking hard-working AMBOs who are sitting there frustrated and can't get back out onto the front line because they're ramped to make savings. That's no way to run a health service. And you can't just keep saying we're spending record money, but at the same time ask your local leaders on the ground to make savings. That to me looks a lot like money that's not being prioritised where it should be. You bet, and this is an idea that came out of a summit we ran in Cairns some time ago, and uh, not only do we welcome it, we'll be encouraging people to make the most of it, but let's use this opportunity now to develop new product to make sure that the next generation of visitors get a new and fresh experience. I want to see more ecotourism. I want to see things like the cableway development take place. Uh, I, I want to see us have a fresh and new and exciting offering on the coast. So let's use this opportunity to get people to fall in love with the Gold Coast again and then let's deliver a product that will wow them for the next generation as well. Uh, I am and um, I went on and booked um, the moment that the 40 to 49 year old cohort was encouraged to do so uh, and I will be getting it next week and I, I just want to make the point to Queenslanders I'm doing it because I want to set an example that if we're going to heal our economy and heal our disconnected families we need to get vaccinated and the moment I was eligible I said I'd be doing so. Now um, what I really would like to do is I'd like to do it side by side with the Premier. Uh, I think that would send a strong message if we got the jab together that Queenslanders have got to do this. And I've asked her that privately, uh, and today I'll ask her publicly. Let's get the jab together so that Queenslanders realise how important this is to heal our economy and heal our disconnected families. Yeah. Well, well, well I'll give you an example. That, um, the Gold Coast HHS, that is in obviously the city that Ros and I represent, um, have been asked to find a massive cut. It's the busiest ED in the country. They're suffering ambulance ramping like we've never seen before, and they didn't even get a small lick of the $100 million we were promised last week. Um, every HHS is at their wits' end because they are seeing a government, Queensland Health, losing control of our health and hospital services. And the only way to fix that is to allow the people on the front line to take control. Better triaging, more open and transparent data. Start being honest and funding beds, not counting chairs underneath a shower as some sort of a bed, not putting masking tape on the ground and saying that's a holding bay. That's the way to fix health and hospital services, by encouraging the people at the front line. It's not them that's the issue, it's not the doctors, it's not the nurses, not the AMBOs, it's not the people who are doing all they can on the front line. It's Queensland Health. It's the Minister. They are losing control of the, of, of the health services in this region, in this state. And to simply ask to squeeze a little bit more blood out of the stone that is the local leaders, HHS is at the front line, well that doesn't cut it. Doesn't cut it in the eyes of honest Queenslanders.
Thank you. Cheers. Thanks very much.